Hi everyone, welcome to SEO Space. You're watching this video because you've got pages on your website that are not showing up on Google. Maybe you've seen this from our SEO tasks or you're actually on our plugin and you've had it flagged that this web page is not on Google. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through five things that you can do to give your web pages the best chance of showing up on Google. And then if after following those steps, your web pages still aren't showing up on Google, at the end of the video, I'm going to walk you through three things that you can then go through in order to troubleshoot this issue and just what I've found is most likely to get your web pages on Google. Now, just getting straight into it, we're going to go through the five things that you should be doing to get your web pages on Google, starting with the most basic and then going up from there. The first thing that I want you to do is make sure that you've connected your website to Google Search Console and added your sitemap. Google Search Console is Google's native platform where you can see how you're showing up on Google and also tell Google that you're ready to be shown up. Now, because you're watching this video, I'm assuming you've already done this step. So if you have, you can skip to the next one. But if you haven't already, what I want you to do is head over to the Squarespace dashboard. Then you go over to settings. From there, you're going to head over to third party tools. Select connected accounts. Then you're going to go to connect account and then select Google Search Console. You do need a Google account in order to do this properly. So once you've actually connected Google Search Console from the Squarespace settings, all I want you to do is type in Google Search Console into the internet. You can then head over to the Google Search Console dashboard from here which after a few days, you'll start to see data around how your Squarespace website is showing up. Now that's the first step, making sure you've connected Google Search Console, but then what I want you to do is to submit your sitemap. Now your sitemap is a map of all the pages on your Squarespace website, which you need to submit to Google in order to boost your chances of ranking. In order to submit it, all you need to do, as long as you've connected Google Search Console the way that I've just shown you, you head over to sitemaps, and then in this box here, I want you to type sitemap.xml and then press submit. As you can see, I've already done this for SEO Spaces website. And again, this is just going to boost your chances of showing up. So now we've covered the first step of boosting your chances of showing up on Google. What I want you to do is just come back to either SEO tasks where you might have seen that you've got pages not showing up on Google or either our plugin if this is how you're finding this tutorial. Now from here, we've made it really easy to ask Google to index an individual web page. As you can see here, we've got a button request indexing and then another one, ask Google to index. And what this button is actually going to do is going to take you over to Google Search Console and it's gonna take you to this URL inspection page. So for any page on your Squarespace website, you can actually head over to this inspect box here and you can inspect this URL and Google Search Console is going to tell you whether the page is on Google or not. And that's the reason that we added this feature because when you press request indexing, you'll be taken to this page and then from there, you're gonna see a little button here, a little snippet of text that says request indexing. And this actually asks Google in order to display this page on Google search engines. So it's a really helpful feature. Now, this doesn't ensure your page is going to be shown. I've already done this step on this web page, but it's still not an index, which is why you need to follow the steps that I'm gonna walk you through later in this video. However, this is a really helpful tool and it solves most of the issues that I see. So as you can see here, indexing is requested, but just before we move on to step three, I'm just gonna show you one last thing when it comes to step two. If you've got really stubborn pages, which just aren't indexing, you can stay in Google Search Console on this view. And here you can press test live URL. And what this is going to do, it's going to ask Google Search Console to test this page to see if there's any errors that are holding you back from being indexed. And this is super helpful for stubborn pages because there may be things going wrong on the page that you just didn't realize. So before moving on to step three, Make sure you just do this to make sure there's nothing holding you back. And as you can see here, this is a live test result. And you can see that this URL is available on Google. So I've requested indexing. I've inspected the URL. It is available to Google. So if it still doesn't index, that's where I'm going to move on to step three, four, and five of this video. 
Now, step three of getting your Squarespace web pages indexed on Google actually requires you to take a step back. And a concept that I'm going to introduce to you is something called Google's Sandbox. When a new website launches, it usually gets placed in something called Google's Sandbox. Now, this is sort of an unofficial term in the industry. It's not something confirmed by Google, but when I explain it to you, hopefully it's going to make sense. Essentially, Google has something called its Sandbox, which it puts new websites in for around three months, which is actually going to hold back its visibility on Google search engines. Now, the reason that Google does this is because it wants to trust your website before it shows it on Google to the billions of people that are searching every single day. And if your Squarespace website is new and you're facing indexing issues, this could be an indication that you're in Google Sandbox. Now, as I've mentioned, this isn't like an official thing that Google actually states that it has, but it's just something that SEO professionals often see with new websites where they're held back, they're put in the sandbox for a couple of months until Google trusts it more in order to rank it. So if your Squarespace website is new, it may just be worth working on other areas of SEO, waiting a couple of months until you get out of this sandbox and you're more likely to be indexed. Because sometimes with these indexing issues, time really is the cure. So even though it can be a little bit frustrating, this is something that a lot of websites face. And if you wait a couple of months, often these indexing issues are solved. Now, of course, you may be facing indexing issues on key pages of your website, so you may not want to wait a couple of months. So that's where we're going to walk on to step four, which is the fourth thing that you can do in order to boost your chances of getting indexed, and that is backlinks. Now, backlinks are links from other websites to yours, and they boost something called your domain authority. Your domain authority is a score of your website, which deems how much of an authority it is on the internet. The more high quality backlinks you have, i.e. links from reputable websites in your niche, the higher your domain authority, the more likely Google is going to take you seriously and rank you on Google and even rank you for highly competitive, highly searched terms. So in order to boost our chances of ranking on Google, we need to make sure that our website has backlinks. In order to see how many backlinks you have, I want you to head over to SEO Spaces competitor analysis tool. And I want you to add your own website in the competitor analysis tool, because what this is going to allow you to do, it's going to allow you to analyze your own website in order to see how many backlinks you have. So for example, as you can see here, I've just added SEO space and SEO space is showing SEO spaces website. It's showing how many backlinks the website actually has and the domain authority, which as I mentioned is a score from zero to one of how much an authority it is on the internet. And then as you can see here, this is an estimate of the number of backlinks, i.e. links from other websites to SEO space that SEO space's website has. And once you do this on your own website, it's going to give you a really good understanding of whether your website has domain authority at all, whether you've got any backlinks, and whether this could be something that's holding you back. If your domain authority is super low, I'm talking sort of less than five, and you don't have many backlinks, then this could be a reason why you're facing indexing problems because your authority just isn't high enough for Google to take you seriously and crawl your website even more and boost your chances of showing up on Google. Now, exactly how to get backlinks is a topic for another video. However, it's definitely worth completing this fourth step to see if you've got any backlinks because if you don't, that could be a reason why you're facing those issues. Which then moves us on to step five that I want you to go through to boost your chances of getting indexed. And this is actually on page SEO. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to head over to the pages that aren't showing up on Google on SEO Spaces website to show you an example. So I'm going to get this page here. Now, if you've got pages that aren't showing up on Google, one of the key things that you need to do, and the last thing that I'm going to walk you through, is making sure that you've got your on-page SEO correct. On-page SEO is essentially just making sure the content on your web page is optimized for search engines. And that's one of the things that our extension does. Our extension walks you through step-by-step step how to improve your on-page SEO. And something that I see really commonly with pages that don't get indexed is actually having thin content. Thin content is when you have less than 300 words on a web page. As you can see here, this page is getting flagged as having thin content. And the reason why thin content, i.e. having less than 300 words on your web page, isn't good for indexing is because when Google crawls your website and analyzes what it should show up for on Google search engines, if 
you don't have enough content on your web page, how is Google going to understand what that web page should rank for? It needs to have content so Google understands what it's about and then ultimately is able to display it on search engines for things that people are searching into Google. So if you don't have enough content, you need to make sure you add more high quality content so Google can analyze it and ultimately display you on search engines for different search terms. Of course, this is just one check. You do need to make sure you go through and fix as many of these checks as possible in order to boost your chances and then also take a step back because sometimes you might have a high score, but if the content on your web page isn't high quality, if it isn't unique, if it's just generic AI content, if it's the same as anything out there on the internet, why is Google going to index you? You need to make sure you give Google a reason to index you, which is why we make sure we follow on-page best practices, i.e. you get this score high. But you also then take a step back to make sure that the web page actually provides value to Google and its users. Because remember, Google is a business and it wants to make sure that the pages that it shows up on search engines are high value. Because if it's high value and its users find them, then it's more likely to trust Google and keep coming back. But if it shows low quality content, People are going to think the search results are rubbish and are less likely to come back. Well, you want to give Google's business a reason to index you, which is why we follow those best practices and why we provide quality content on the web pages. Of course, this is going to require you to be honest, take that step back and really assess, is the content on this web page really worth indexing? Because if it isn't, then that's probably why Google isn't showing you. Now, if you followed all of these steps and Google still isn't indexing certain pages or your website on Google search engines, I'm going to walk you through three things that you can do in order to overcome this. And the first one is maybe something that you don't want to hear. I've already touched upon this early in the video, but it is time. Google has got billions of websites in order to go through, which means there's potentially tens, hundreds of millions of pages that it's got to go through in order to index on search engines. So you're one of billions of different web pages that are in the queue. And this sometimes means that you just need to wait a little bit of time. Once you follow these steps, once you've gone through the things, as long as you've got enough backlinks and your page is high quality, I'm very, very confident that you will rank. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time. The second thing that you just need to reassess if you followed all of those steps is just come back to backlinks because backlinks is a thing that I see come up time and time again, especially with website owners that are early on in their SEO journey. Maybe you didn't know what backlinks were before watching this video. If your website doesn't have enough backlinks, as I've already mentioned, Google just is less likely to take you seriously. So if you followed all of those steps, you've checked how many backlinks you have and it's still not working and your pages still aren't being indexed, you are likely going to need to revisit this, build more backlinks, which as I mentioned is a topic for another video, which will boost your chances of getting ranked. The third and final thing that I want you to assess if your pages still aren't getting indexed on Google is whether the pages that aren't being indexed are really for indexing. And what I mean when I say for indexing is, is it actually a page on your Squarespace website that you want to be indexed, i.e. you want to show up on search engines? So for example, as you can see on SEO Spaces website, these are two live webinar pages, which are in a navigation, as you can see here. These are all of our free live webinars. And this is just a page that someone can visit in order to sign up for this webinar. There's no content on it, and really there's no reason for Google in order to show it up. And to be honest, this isn't even a page that I really want to show up on Google. It's not high priority for me. My main pages that I want to show up on my homepage or our Hire-Us page, our SEO course page. You know, there's just some pages on our website and on your website where it really doesn't matter whether they're being indexed. Other examples are your terms and conditions, your privacy policy pages. You know, those aren't really important when it comes to driving more revenue and more business for your website. So if you're facing indexing issues on pages like this, sometimes it's just worth not worrying about because sometimes you've just got pages on your website which really don't matter that much. And that's actually a reason when you add a new website to SEO space or you re-audit it, that's actually a reason that we have the option to skip pages. As you can see here, we recommend skipping pages that you don't want to appear on Google such as privacy policy pages, thank you pages, maybe even one-off promotional pages that you have. If you're facing indexing issues on those pages, I recommend just skipping them completely. It's not worth losing sleep over it because there's many other things that you can focus on in order to move the needle with your SEO efforts. 
and grow your business. And I don't want you to be focused on things that aren't going to move the needle, which is why we have this option to skip pages that you want to exclude from the site-wide audit so they no longer show up as pages not indexed and no longer hold back your score. So there you are, guys. That is a complete run through of how to solve indexing issues on your Squarespace website. Of course, if you have any questions, if you have any problems, come through the chat icon in this bottom right hand corner. We'll be more than happy to help. Hopefully this has solved your indexing issues and I'll see you in the next video.